Here in Ghana, one major sector that leaves a massive carbon footprint is the automotive industry. In its recent monetary policy report for July 2021, the central bank said vehicle registrations registered by the DVLA moved up to 21,389 from an earlier 16,107 vehicles registered during the corresponding period of 2020. Out of this number, less than a percentage utilizes green energy. This is where Belinda Akaba comes in. I believe that we are going to switch to electric because looking at where we are leading to in the next probably four to five years to come, everybody wants to drive electric cars because for the four cars, they are polluting the environment and the noise is very serious. She is a young engineer whose dream it is to not just see an upskill in green cars, but also with women leading the charge. I want to be the engineer that will be out there to motivate a lot of young ladies that are venturing into the male-dominated field and to be a mentor for them, to lead them and to guide them on their career path. Even as Ghana's automotive space takes shape, we have just less than a percentage of the workforce assembling vehicles, especially in the electric space, being that of women. But the likes of Belinda are very much confident of changing this narrative through their talent, their commitment, as well as their positive mindset. For many Ghanaian females, venturing into a male-dominated space as engineering comes with its challenges. But Belinda is focused to succeed. The Cheney I won't, I won't say it has been easy, I won't say it has been tough, but it's, it's within, it's just in the middle. It started back then when I was in Volta Region some years ago that I was now in high school. I needed to go back to the uni, but because of some financial problems that my dad was facing, I had to stay back at home for a year to sort myself out. So during that year, I had to run some business like teaching, doing bedworks and selling some stuff to be able to gather some money and then later go to the university. But during that one year, I would say a miracle happened. My mom actually called me one day and she introduced me to an NGO that were training ladies into the male-dominated field. I felt it was a great opportunity for me to venture into since I've been willing and be dying to work in the male-dominated field. Although I was a visual student, I felt that's where I I, I fit, that's how I'm supposed to be because I developed some kind of passion for it. Her company, Solar Taxi, is providing for a niche automobile market that utilizes on green energy. As global demand for petrol products increase, consumers in Ghana have no choice than spend close to 300 CDs each week for petrol. This is much less for drivers of electric vehicles who spend just 40 CDs a week in recharging. I believe in this climate change and I know it's going to bring a sustainable development as well and um, affordable energy too because with the EVs you are going to spend less because charging your car for a day probably will be like 40 cities and you have to use it for one full week. So just imagine that by using a full car you spend like 250 cities on just your car for one week which is very bad. So I, I can see that we are, we are heading towards the right direction. How many of you think Ghana is ready to go electric when it comes to vehicles? I just see, all right. Any reason why you think Ghana is ready? Yeah, to me, I think Ghana is ready to go electric because the rate of pollution is alarming. Mm. Noise pollution and then the air pollution at mm. the same time. As a country, we are beginning to explore other forms of energy production and with time, Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but with time we'll get there. Even as Ghana adjusts to a more greener environment, the gender card could pose as a challenge. 
and listen in as colleagues of Belinda share experiences of being female in a male-dominated field. The experience is a bit fun, interesting because it's been seen as a male-dominated field. So quite often when we go on the field to have maintenance on our cars outside, the, the clients are actually amazed, but those who actually believe that women are capable of anything actually put up to us that we should keep up with the good work we do and um, do our best. Sometimes when you go out or maybe sometimes when they come in for their periodic maintenance, um, they'll be asking where is your supervisor or something and you tell them that you are the one in charge and you'll be like it's fine and some people too will be like no you can't do it but for me i took it to myself that someone was able to do it so why can't i do it so well, i remember quite some time ago we had to go and fix a a charger for a client and uh, when we got there the man was looking at us we were actually three ladies with one guy which happened to be our driver so he was looking at us we brought our tools out and we started working then all of a sudden the man called his electrician that he should come and check the the meter so some ladies are here to work and i called and said come on what are you trying to do we are here to work for you so just go back inside and sit and i think after 10 minutes we're done installing the charger and everything works. Within some few minutes, his light went off. Then this man came again and he was shouting, what have you guys done to my, my light? And I just climbed a table, then I fixed it back. Then he was like, wow, like, did you really do this? Or he was just shocked. And after he was like, you, you ladies are great and I advise that you ladies should just push them no matter what, because when he saw us first, he was thinking that we can't do it, but we've proved him wrong and he was so happy. Now, what message do you have, one to government and the other one, young girls out there who'd want to venture into mechanical engineering? Our place is not only for the kitchen, so we can, we can also do it. The way the men are able to pull, we can also be able to pull through. So the ladies should be motivated, they shouldn't be intimidated. They should just go forward for what they are passionate about and do it. The government should also invest more into helping ladies. Maybe there should be scholarships for ladies who are ready to do uh, to delve into such programs so that they'll be motivated to go further. Great. And with my fellow ladies out there, I would like to tell them that nothing is impossible. Yeah, at some point I thought it was going to be impossible, but today I'm here. So they should challenge themselves to do something new because being a male dominated field is a new thing and you have to strive hard to become great and to do the, make the impossible possible. Yeah. Great. And to the government, they should help with the tech firms quite often. They don't support the tech firms. So they should try their best to promote and support the females who are getting into the tech firms lately. Should be more of commitment to what you do and in everything you do and shouldn't be afraid to ask for help whether from men or women, guys, ladies, irrespective, just push forward and do what you want to do. And for the government, I think um, they've already started a female empowerment initiative. Exactly. So we wish to their elbows and we we're looking up for more. Great. So these guys are clear products of technical vocational training. They're confident that even as the world gets warmer, their technical skills and capacity could help Ghana uplift its reserves when it comes to going electric and sustaining its developmental goals along the lines of going green. I'm Charles Aite for Joy Business.